In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create our own custom work features with Autodesk Inventor. So we have some standard work features that we've already become accustomed to, and those are in our origin folder inside of our IPT files, and they're also inside of our IAM or assembly files. So our standard origin features are found under the origin node on our browser on the left-hand side, and we have the three standard planes, the YZ, the XZ, and the XY. Now, not everything can be built around the origin all the time. So what if I need to have a cylinder going into this block at an angle? How would I ever get that with my standard origin features? It'd be rather difficult. I wouldn't say impossible, but rather difficult. So in order to help assuage the difficulty, we're going to have our own commands to create our own custom work planes, something that's not the standard Cartesian system. So the work plane tools are going to be found up here. On this flyout, this is on the 3D model tab on the work features panel. If I click on that flyout, I get to see all the different types of work planes that I can possibly create. Now at the very top, the command called plane is a very dynamic command. A lot of veteran users will use the plane command because they know what inputs are required for their work planes. But if you're a little bit newer to the software, which with this video series, we assume that you are, we might come in here and actually fly this out and very explicitly choose which type of work plane we'd like to create. Now, I could go through each and every one of these guys, but to be honest, there's actually some work plane tools in here that I haven't used in 10 years, just because the geometry I normally create isn't really necessary for me to use that tool. So this is just everything you could possibly create. It doesn't mean you're going to use every single one of these. And over time, after you get accustomed to you know what you have to pick first and second, you won't have to come in this flyout every time. Instead, you'll just have to click on the plane tool and you'll be pretty happy with you know, what you need to input. So what we're going to talk about here are the most commonly used ones as a focal point. From there, we'll see other work features used throughout the course for other feature sets we might need. So we're going to start off by looking at just the most basic, the offset from plane. So I'm going to choose this one. Now, when I have offset from plane selected, it's waiting for me to click on a face or perhaps an origin plane to offset from. So if I choose this, the XZ plane, that becomes my parent reference for this work feature. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And I do get an arrow here for positive and negative. So I'm just going to click and hold and drag this either way. Let's say I want to go this way, negative 50. I'll go ahead and approve that with the green check mark here. Or I can right click and choose OK. So there I have created my own custom work plane. Here it just gives it a next identifier. This is work plane 15 in this case. I am looking at the negative side of it based on the color of this. If I were to rotate this, you can see I do have a positive side there, which is a different color. And again, since I chose the origin plane as a reference for this offset plane, it's not going to be damaged by any faces of the extrusion that might change. So this is all based on a very solid parent reference. I'm going to undo this and do the exact same work plane, offset from plane. This time I'm going to come from this face here. And I'll grow this out, let's say, 30 in this direction. Notice it's now a positive value. Because when you select on a face, the normal side of a face, when you come off of that, it will be a positive value. With the XZ plane, I had actually chosen a standard Cartesian system and went in the opposite direction, so therefore it was negative. But here I'll come out 30. Now also notice the size of the plane, okay? This is basically a reference of that face as far as rough sizing goes. That can be adjusted with a couple different settings we'll see in a different video. Now since this was built on the extrusion and not on an origin plane, if I were to go back and change some of my dimensions, so if I change this from 50 to let's say 100, and then update my model, you can see that work plane always stays 30 away from it. Whereas my previous plane, the one I was created on the XZ plane, would have always stayed at negative 50 away from the origin plane. So depending on how you'd like to build your geometry, how you like things to update, it's important that you recognize whether you want to use origin features as a reference or existing faces and edges. So we're going to do a couple undos, and just work this back to where it was before. The next plane I would like to create is one angled at this edge and angled off of this face, or maybe angled off of the XY plane. So I can choose that based on how I choose my inputs. But I'll go up here in my plane, fly out, 
And another really commonly used one, again, is an angle to a plane around an edge. I'll choose that. Here I'll pick this edge first or this face first. It really doesn't matter which one you do first or second. So I'll choose this face and then this edge. And now it prompts me for a value. Currently it's set at 90 degrees. I can use my arrow to adjust that. So right there is negative 20. I also go the other way around for a positive value. Just depends how you like to input that in there. Here I'll do negative 30. That's actually what I want. So there's my work plane again. Now I'd like to start sketching on this work plane because that was the reason I really wanted to create this one. So I'm going to go ahead and left click on the edge of the work plane. Notice that if you click on the inside of it, nothing happens. When you select a work plane, you either have to grab it here on the edge or you have to grab it from your tree in your model browser. So I'm going to click on this plane to select it and say New Sketch. Here I can use some standard tools for drawing. So I'll just put in a quick circle. I'm going to put a dimension in to an edge, say 25. We'll make this 20. Just going to do a vertical alignment there. So I have a fully constrained sketch. And then I'll finish out of it. Now that I have the cylinder here, the circle, I'm going to actually extrude that into that face. I'm going to go ahead and choose Extrude. I want to go the opposite way. You see how it's currently going all the way through there? So having it go all the way through, I'll tell it to terminate to a selected face, which will be the top face here. And there we have a cylinder going in at an angle to that. Next up, we'll take a look at creating a work plane that's mid-plane between two parallel planes, another very common one. So with this one, it's waiting for you to select on two flat plane references. It could be an origin plane and a work plane. It could be a origin plane and a face. It could be a work plane and a face. It could be two faces. Basically, any two things which are flat and parallel. So if I choose this face here in this plane, and then puts a plane down right between those two. I'm going to do another one of those, mid-plane between two parallel planes. This time I'll choose this plane over here, and this side of the block over here. Now I'll put one right down the middle for me as well. It's a nice way to create a symmetrical plane. And if this block changes, this will always still stay between those two faces because those were the parent relationships for them. So I'll go ahead and do that quick. Let's change this from 50 to 70. There you go. We'll update that. It's our update button up here. You can see those automatically adjusted to stay still between those two faces. Now, in order to turn some of these visibilities off, we can right click on the plane in the tree and turn off visibility. Or we can right click on the work plane itself and visibility is in our lower right area of the marking menu. I'm just going to do that to clean up my display here a little bit. And the last one I want to talk about here, which is very common, is the tangent to a surface and parallel to a plane. So by selecting that one, it's waiting for me to pick on a face first or a cylinder first, either way. Really, I prefer to pick on a flat planar reference first. So I'm going to choose this guy right here. And now when I click on the cylinder, it's going to be very dynamic for which side I click on. So I can click on the left side or the right side of it, and I'll get two different responses for that. If I want it over here on that side of the tangency or this side of the tangency, it does matter where I select. So just be careful with that. Now, I went ahead and placed that one there, but I chose this face as my parent reference. Maybe that wasn't the best idea. So let me undo that, and I'll do this plane again. Tangent to a surface and parallel to a plane. This time I'll choose an origin plane, the XZ, or maybe the YZ. I'll be tangent to that instead. Now, if I want to use the plane tool without the flyout, again, a little bit more advanced once you feel comfortable with it, I'll click on plane. And I know that I need a flat reference, so maybe the XZ plane, and then this side of the cylinder. So there I was able to start my work plane and finish my work plane with my known inputs without having to go through the flyout. So this has been a look at creating some simple work features, perhaps the most commonly used ones, the offset from plane, the tangent to a surface in parallel to a plane, 
and the angle of bottom plane, as well as the mid plane between two parallel planes. So I think those are the four most common. Again, we'll see more of these different work feature types as we progress through the course. And there may be some work features that you may never use, but when it comes up, we'll take a look at that in different videos.